Hello, good evening. Welcome to this podcast discussion. Hopefully we are live not only on YouTube tonight, but we're live on Facebook as well. So as you're coming on, as you're jumping into the stream, if you're watching live, particularly if you're picking this up on Facebook, we'd love to hear from you in the comments just to let us know that we are indeed live with you. If you don't know us, my name is Pete, this is Claire, and we are part of the leadership team at Arise Church. And over the last uh, few weeks, we've been jumping on, usually on Thursday night, sometimes Wednesday night, um, to talk a little bit more about some of the things that we've been discussing in our Sunday services as we've gathered together. And tonight is no different. We're going to do that. But it is a little bit different in as much as we're into a new series that we began on Sunday. And so we're going to run this podcast alongside this series that we're into now on Sundays, which is all about the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit and what why they're so important, what they're used for and, and all of those good things. So this is going to be an interesting discussion, not just tonight, but over the next few weeks as we go through this series together and we seek to learn more about the Holy Spirit, more about uh, the gifts that he gives, more about how they're to be used for the good of the church and how they can be uh, stepped into and how they're for every single believer. So there's going to be so much to talk about. But as always, we would love, love, love to hear from you. So as you're coming in tonight, we would love to hear your questions, love to hear your comments, pop them into the chat. Let us know where you're watching. Let us know what your questions are. Let us know your thoughts as we go through this evening and we'll do our best to interact with any questions or comments that you may put in there and hopefully we'll have a really really interesting and fruitful discussion on uh, the gifts of the holy spirit and all sort of things around that subject so uh, i think we're probably fairly game for going down a few tangents tonight aren't we claire so i can't see a rabbit hole or two tonight Pete. i really do <laughs> yeah all right just for a change why not yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um one thing we're going to bear in mind now is um claire you mentioned just before we went live that you've had a few issues with your internet connection tonight so we're just going to trust god that that's going to hold up this evening and that yes. you're going to full part. my brand new all all dazzling awesome supposed to be b fiber 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 broadband has been off most of today uh, so i've not been able to do much work so i've just been uh, as i said to you before just been there uh, reading my bible i had to do something handwritten I couldn't couldn't you know there was nothing i could do without internet it's really how have we come to this place where there's, <laughs> where if there's no internet i can't work i mean i'm not even a millennial and i if there's no internet i can't work so uh yeah but hopefully it will it will hold up i've just not had that text yet from them to say everything's fine so but hopefully it will be well, hopefully not needed and we'll have a, a good old time tonight so um we began on sunday this series that we've entitled Gifted, where we're looking at um, the spiritual gifts. And we're kind of doing this in two parts, as I mentioned on Sunday. We're starting with looking at the spiritual gifts that are described for us in 1 Corinthians 12. And then in the second part, the last two weeks of this six-week series, we're going to look at the uh, Ephesians 4 ministry gifts, as they're sometimes known. So the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Uh, we're going to look at those gifts in the last two weeks of this series as well. So we might not talk a huge amount about them this evening, and we'll maybe save some of that discussion for as we get yeah. a little bit on in the series. And tonight, we're probably going to focus a little bit more on that 1 Corinthians 12 gift list, um, and particularly on Sunday, we talked just about two of these. We talked about words of wisdom and words of knowledge, as they're probably most commonly known. Um, I think in the ESV, which is a translation that both you and I like to use, Claire, they're called the utterance of wisdom and the utterance of knowledge. So um, if we sort of use those terms interchangeably tonight, I'm sure that'll be fine. Um, but we're, as we say, ready to go down a few different rabbit holes, to go through, on a few different tangents. So where should we begin in this discussion? So we talked a bit about on Sunday about why why are we doing this series now? You know, um, we asked that question, why why look at this now? Because, you know, we could do this anytime. We've done this before in church. We've done this um, multiple times in, in different spaces where we've looked at the gifts. Uh, but why is it a topic that we keep coming back to over and over and over again? And, um, you know, I started exploring that question just with that uh, verse from, the very start of 1 Corinthians 14, where it says, pursue love and earnestly the de desire the spiritual gifts. Because this is a, a command. We're told to do this. We're told yeah. to pursue uh, these gifts. Well, pursue love and, and earnestly desire these gifts so that we can 
build up the church so the church can be established built up for common good so do we want to talk a little bit more in general terms Claire, as we just kick off about um why the gifts are there what purpose do they serve i think on sunday we looked at this primarily from a point of view as the holy spirit gives these gifts manifestations different gifts different empowerings different functions but the same spirit behind each of these gifts mm -hmm. to the church so that the church can be built up encouraged edified for the common good from that foundation of love which is so important so do you want to kind of take that and run with it and see where we go yeah well i was just going to say i mean you just you just sort of said um right at the end there what i was thinking is that you know it's all out of that that pursuit of love and and i love the way that Paul has those in the right order. I mean, who am I to tell Paul what the right order is? But, you know, he's teaching me what the right order is. But, but I love that it is in that order, so, you know, that it's love first and, and and then we work out of the gifts that God has given us. Because, um, you know, there's there's gifts there that if not, if not used out of love could actually be really damaging. Mm. So knowledge and wisdom and, you know, unless... Sometimes God will give you something that actually isn't just a a pat on the back, you know, um, a word of knowledge or, or is in, in particular a word of wisdom. Sometimes you have to speak into a situation and um, love um, isn't just, uh, we've said this before, love, it doesn't just allow all things, you know, love speaks into all things, um, but love can sometimes speak into a situation with um something that's not very nice to hear or with some authority that you weren't really aware that god wanted to exercise um and you know love is not about that do what you like do what you want and anything you do and we'll accept it that is not love love from a father is directive um it's teaching it's sometimes rebuking uh, things that are done because we are loved and so those gifts have to come out of love. You know, you, you can you can tell the truth if you're doing it in love. Mm -hmm. um, but truth without love is often quite hurtful. So I just love the fact that they're in that order. And, um, and I love the fact, actually, that love is a fruit of the spirit, um, mm -hmm. which the Christian um, will, you know, will grow in the Christian. It's one of the... Um, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Was that all nine? Um, yeah. Did you count? Did you not count them, Pete? Well, I was saying them. Oh, my wall here. You can't see it. Just there. I've got it. <laughs> Just there. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, I can't. oh, yes. I can see your picture. Um, yeah. So those are the those are the things that will grow within the Christian over the years um, because of the presence and um, because of the regeneration work of the Holy Spirit that is given to us at salvation um but it's the uh, and so that is there already um and then it is the gifts of the spirit that come um, and are given to us um by the holy spirit after baptism in the spirit some some denominations call it baptism in the spirit sometimes some people call it being filled with the spirit and it doesn't really matter what you say but you know it you you need to be filled with the spirit um you need to have that happen um, as quickly as possible after salvation at the same time if if I've got anything to do with it and you as well yeah, um, yeah but um, yeah those, so those gifts are operating out of love and Paul is right the pursuit of love is absolutely paramount to the use yeah. of gifts and I think one of the things we talk a lot about at Arise Church is the importance of character yeah. and uh, this is this sits alongside that uh, and I think predominantly when we're talking about character, if we could choose one sort of attribute or virtue that would typify the kind of character that we're seeking to cultivate in ourselves and in our body it would be that of love. It would be that virtue of love that, you know, is outward focused the whole time. I love how Paul phrases that in First Corinthians 13 when he says, you know, love is this and love is not that. And everything that love is points out and everything that love isn't points in. Yeah. And it's this great um, way of um focusing our hearts i guess towards others around us and it all dovetails in with what he says about these spiritual gifts that you know they're given for the common good they're given to build up the church and as we together as we exercise these gifts each the gifts that god has given to each of us we 
in love, build one another up, one another up, so that all together we grow up into the head of the body, which is Christ. We look more like Him. We grow in love towards one another. We grow in love towards those around us, it, to the communities that we serve, and love forms the foundation from which we advance the kingdom of heaven. And so that's so so central. We could have really have started a whole this, the whole of the series just on First Corinthians thirteen, but we yeah. didn't have the time. So. Um, yeah, great. that's why we're doing this now, right? Because we're going into, yeah. a, you know, we're, we're carrying a brand new vision and we know that we do things differently. Uh, and I'm not saying the use of spiritual gifts is any different to what any other church would, would have. And, you know, that is the, the purpose of spiritual gifts is to build up the body and, and churches that um, that accept the empowering work of, the, of being filled with the spirit would, would agree with that. But, you know, we're carrying a vision that includes um, sanctification and it includes, you know, some of the plans that we've got, which were yet to be seen by maybe all of the community, but some of the plans that we've got to build a heart of worshipping people and, you know, and, and that intercessory prayer um, uh, within people as well. And, um, and, you know, and all of that's from God. And it's all a beautiful vision of people gathering together, um, his bride pursuing her king, waiting for him to come back. And, you know, that whole um, picture of, of, of that's, that's really rooted in Jewish marriage about the bride waiting for the bridegroom to come. And while she's waiting, having been engaged by the two fathers, you know, she's then waiting for her bridegroom to come back to her father's house and sweep her away and take her to be married. And that can take anything up to, you know, a year, 18 months, depending on how long it takes him to build the house that they're going to live in. And uh, see, this is all biblical language. It's just, it's just so good. And so we are that bride, readying ourselves, preparing ourselves. We know that Jesus is coming back. And from the things that I see in the world now, and I'm pretty sure every generation has said this, but you know, the things that we are seeing in the world now, particularly the sweeping out of the corners of the church that God is doing, where He's He's bringing things that were once hidden into the light and you know people are being made accountable for some mistakes that have been made and that makes me think that you know we are readying ourselves for his return and and his return by definition is closer every day because yeah. he is coming back and so you know we 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 believe in the imminent return of Christ but if it's not tomorrow then you know we're still closer and so we need to ready ourselves and prepare ourselves and that's what our our vision is about isn't it and so yeah. you know teaching this now and um, some will already know it know it really well and will be cheering us on from the sidelines as we introduce new members of the church to something that perhaps they have never come across before and some will have known it and walked away from it and, you know, need to come back to it. Um, there's just so many levels of um, of knowledge and experience in our community, um, which but they will all benefit from being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we're teaching it now. So we can carry this vision and become that bride that's, that's waiting for her king. Absolutely. Yeah. It was that Isaiah 60 passage all over again, isn't it? It's the, it's the yeah. arise, shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. And in the midst of the darkness that we find ourselves in, like you were saying, as we look out and we and we see that darkness, it's incumbent upon us as the church to arise and shine, to be that light and to draw people towards Christ. And I think I, think I ended up the message on Sunday by saying, I think actually in that pursuit, the, the baptism of the spirit, the empowering of the spirit the manifestation of the gifts that god has given his church are essential for the church to arise and shine and and to be that light that pierces the darkness i, I love what paul says where he says the kingdom of god is not a matter of words but of power and uh, you know the, the the kind of piercing light that we need to see come forth from the church at this time is one that's fully empowered fully alive to the, to the workers of the holy spirit to what he's doing and seeing the whole body raised up in in the in the use of the gifts that God has given for his church to be built, empowered, equipped, sent out yeah. to do the things that he's, he's established for it to do. Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why we're studying this now. Um, but I mean, it, it's life changing as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, before I was filled with the spirit and I know you won't believe this about me, Pete, but before I was filled with the spirit, you know, I would curse my 
cursed people and worship God with the same mouth. Mm. You know, it was just like it was it was like Sunday Christianity, you know, you'd go along to church and you'd see all these brilliant people that you thought were so much better than you. And so you wanted to fit in with them. So you 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 know, you I, I knew about Jesus. I could worship Jesus. That wasn't a problem. Um, but I wasn't filled with the spirit. And so the minute I, you know, turned up at work on the Monday morning or got um, tired out because the kids had been up all night or or whatever, you know, that mouth that had been praising Jesus on the Sunday started being used to for cursing mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and, and moaning and complaining and negativity and, um, and arguing and shouting and getting angry and, you know, cutting people up in the car and making signals to them and all the rest of it. And it was when I was baptized in the spirit that all that changed. Suddenly there was a, there was a peace and a calm that, that meant that, I mean, don't get me wrong. It took years and years to grow to the point where I now am confident. That I wouldn't do that at all ever. Even if someone did cut me up in the car. Um, but it's, yeah, it, that was the turning point. That was the change. And, uh, and we all need that. We all need it. So let's let's just zone in on the importance of the the baptism of the spirit. We use that language at Arise Church, like you said. Some other churches will use different language, maybe being filled with the spirit. Um, but we're pointing to the to the same thing, um, though we might phrase it slightly differently. Um, we have just gone through our statement of faith, where we have a whole statement where we talk about the Holy Spirit, um, what he what he does, uh, and what what his role is in salvation and in that statement we talked about the um the baptism of the holy spirit as a subsequent act which is what we teach at arise church so let just talk to us a little bit about the importance of the distinction and maybe for if there are one or two people listening who maybe are wondering about the baptism of the spirit is that the same thing as being saved what's all that about maybe just talk us through that before we begin to look at a little bit yeah, so we talked didn't we, about how the um, Holy Spirit does different works in in people. And the first thing that he does is convict you of sin. So as an unbeliever, it is the Holy Spirit that begins to soften your heart and bring you to a point where you realize that you need God and you need Jesus. And so you begin to listen and say, what is this all about? Um, and then the act of salvation. So when a person makes a decision of repentance, so... I no longer want to live the life I'm living. I want to change. I want to walk towards God's way and look at what he wants for me. Then that is, um, that's what we, that's a regeneration work. And the Holy Spirit is involved in that as well. Um, And that can take, I mean, traditionally, certainly within the 20th century, that has been, um, praying a prayer, a particular prayer, the sinner's prayer, you know, is, is, as it's called. Um, but actually, you know, I'm sure that, you know, there's no there's no dialogue that you have to say. There's nothing that you, no religious mantra that you have to spout in order to be saved. The, the Holy Spirit will do a regeneration in you if that is what your heart is seeking mm. and, that, and your heart has been softened. And so um, the Holy Spirit begins to regenerate you. And then there is the empowerment. And that is the subsequent act. And some churches will say secondary act. I don't like to use the word secondary because it sounds almost like you do one first and then a bit later on you do the other. And I like to see both done at salvation. So if I am leading somebody through um, a a, a repentance and and a commitment to to Christ, I will explain about the Holy Spirit there and then. So usually they will already know that it's Jesus that they that they need to commit to. And so I will say, we're going to say a prayer and you're going to tell Jesus how you're feeling. And you can repeat the words after me so you don't have to think up the words for yourself. But also we're going to pray that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I will and I will very quickly say this is um, the third part of the Trinity. He is God, too. And he is the one that empowers us to live that life. Is that OK if I pray that? And you know, yes, no one's ever said to me, no, I don't want that. No, thanks. Um, they might say, I don't really know what you mean, but yeah. And then, you know, afterwards you can you can discuss that further. But for me, Holy Spirit, regenerate this life, you know, give them a new start. 
and empower them to to live that life in the new start. But that's not a once and for all done and dusted event. So Paul talks about being, being filled with the spirit. So it's a continuous present tense when Paul talks about it in, I think, Ephesians. And, um, and so every single day, fill me with your Holy Spirit, continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You might not um, have that same experience every day. Usually the first time you experience that is quite overpowering. And um, you can really, and not always, some people say they didn't feel anything, but they noticed the change in themselves later. But often there is a um, an emotion or um, a display of um, uh, spiritual gifts, uh, speaking in tongues, Often something like that happens. Yeah. Um, but every morning, first thing, as you, as we get out of bed, fill me with your Holy Spirit today, Lord. You know? Yeah. 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 And I think that's, um, I think when you were talking there about um, often it, there's sort of something visible that happens when somebody's filled with the Holy mm. Spirit. I think it's just really important to, to back that up in Scripture. That I think there's a few times at which uh, in the book of Acts that you see that happen where, uh, an observer is looking on as somebody is filled with the Holy Spirit and, the, and it, there's a recognition that it's happened. Mm -hmm. So I, I, the, the one example that comes to my mind right now is, is Simon the sorcerer. Um, when the apostles go to Samaria after Philip, the evangelist has gone there and shared the gospel. And then the apostles go to lay the hands on the people to, so that they can receive the Holy Spirit. And it says that Simon the sorcerer, when he saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on of hands, yeah. he then goes to try and bribe the, yeah. the apostles so that he can have that power. Yeah. So obviously he saw something yeah. that made him understand that, yeah. ah, this is what's happening as they're laying hands on. There was some visible manifestation or some audible manifestation something that he saw um and so i just wanted to reassure people i think that that you know like you were saying it's not always the case um that we that we see something happen but it is very often the case that there is some visible manifestation which is not always the same can be different um but that there is often something that's kind of a a, a physically tangible event to yeah. uh, to kind of reveal what's happened on the inside of somebody in that time so thanks for that uh, overview Claire. i think that's really helpful because as we come to talk about spiritual gifts it's that it's that not um subsequent that's the language you use isn't it subsequent act of the filling of the holy spirit baptism of the spirit where um the gifts come into play now that's not to say that the first time that you're filled with the holy spirit you're going to receive all those Any gifts. Gift, yeah. all the gift. um, Suddenly you're wise and you've got knowledge yeah. of everyone. And, and no, it doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and there can be subsequent times through your life where you might receive a new gift um, yeah. through the Holy Spirit. And also, as we'll get on to talk a little bit about when we discuss some of these gifts, um, some of these gifts are going to be gifts that you that are given to you by the Holy Spirit and remain with you. And some of them are going to be gifts that are given to you for a specific purpose a specific time a specific occasion um and that can happen all the way along your christian walk so um so we haven't talked about this yeah i feel like i i want to challenge you so okay. how many of the nine do you think are given to us and we keep and yeah. the rest are given to us when needed because you're right, there are, there is a definitely a difference between the gifts. Some are given, and you can do it every day. Yeah. Others are um, given to you at the time when it's needed. Okay. Almost as if God's saying, "I'm not giving you the credit for this. You are not going to become someone yeah. like this all the time." So, which ones do you think? So, I think that I mean, there's a really easy one that says, uh, for me, I think the gift of tongues. When you have the gift of tongues, that's one that you you get and you get to keep, and it's yours to exercise whenever you choose to exercise it. So you can choose to speak in tongues, you can choose not to speak in tongues. If you've been given the gift of tongues, that's yours, and you can exercise it at your will. I think yeah. there are others that are um, not ne that might be the same, but they only manifest in particular circumstances. So. Um, discerning between spirits could be the same as in it could be a gift that you are given and you get to keep it but it's only really activated when you're in a particular circumstance where it's necessary for you to discern between the spirits um, I think 
probably the others i would lean towards saying that they're all um circumstantial maybe prophecy would be the one where i would I say, say i would say prophecy as you well. know when paul says um you can all prophesy if there's many of you speaking you know you take it in turns if one receives a revelation the other one sit down and be quiet it intimates to me that that's something that you have more control over and more um sort of the ability to sort of at will exercise that gift though i think there's less clarity on prophecy than there is on tongues i don't know where if you see that one different but all the rest i would say perhaps with the exception of um distinguishing between spirits and maybe interpretation of tongues though again uh, maybe experience experience for that one in me would say that's one that when somebody brings a tongue sometimes i get the interpretation and sometimes yeah. i don't yeah. so I, I don't think that that's one that i always have so i would say tongues prophecy or, or definitely tongues maybe prophecy heavy maybe for me on that one and maybe like maybe uh, distinguishing between spirits as ones that you get to kind of keep and exercise at will and the rest are gifts that god gives for a circumstance or occasion um and i, and I think for those ones that are given for a circumstance or an occasion they to me seem almost like everybody should expect at some point that they might get to operate in one of those gifts let's just name them all because we named yeah. the fruit of the spirit and I'm just thinking, I'm listening to you i'm thinking oh gosh can i name all nine so 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 um tongues and the interpretation of tongues um gift of knowledge gift of faith gift of wisdom gifts of healings gifts of miracles prophecy which one have i missed i'll just put them in the chat put well i put the scripture from first corinthians 12 in the chat okay. so we've got um word of wisdom uh word of knowledge faith was the faith the one you missed no it said faith uh faith healing miracles prophecy uh, distinguishing between spirits oh, that's the one tongues of and interpretation of tongues yeah that's one of them is discerning between spirits so i think i also mentioned on sunday as well that um though we're looking at these two passages first corinthians 12 and um ephesians 4 that's not an exhaustive lift list of spiritual gifts either so romans 12 i think is the other place where you get other gifts listed so you have uh leadership and administration and teaching uh mentioned hospitality, in, in, hospitality yeah so and I, think, I, I would have thought i would have thought everyone can be hospitable but do you know there are people that really do have the yeah. gift of hospitality yeah. aren't there there's people that can really cook and make you feel like you know you're really welcome and and others that you go along and you think oh my gosh i'm you know should i even be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i don't it's an interesting one isn't it to think of that as a spiritual gift so i'm not quite sure um maybe i need to need to pray for a greater uh, ability to distinguish between spirits it's like um, whether you would know whether somebody's actually operating in that gift as averse to somebody's just really gregarious and kind of welcoming and homely and i don't know yeah yeah it's an interesting yeah. one isn't it well, but I likewise i guess with administration and leadership to a degree as well well i suppose it depends on what you're using it for as well don't you isn't it i mean elite so somebody that has been blessed with leadership or has been given the gift of leadership as, as a spiritual gift will lead in every area of their lives even before they become a christian you know i was always a leader always it made me very unpopular and mm. it meant that you know people said i never stopped talking and you know claire's always the one with claire's always talking and you know claire's so bossy that was the other thing i was called you're so bossy mm. you know because obviously i didn't know how to handle or deal with um that gift but it was always there it was always there school reports claire's a natural leader but she must learn to work as a team and not go blah, blah 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 all of that all of those all of those negative things about those traits and yet they become your strengths in the end don't they so that that's and that's useful to remember as well as actually as a parent you know that all of those behaviors that you yeah. really struggle to align your child with the right behaviors or what you see as the right behaviors they are leadership qualities. Don't quash them. Please don't quash them. But yeah, I think, and and if you're, if you're gifted as an administrator or if you're gifted in hospitality, you will do that all over in everything that you do. 
Um, and so I think that's why they are separate from, from this group of, um, of spiritual gifts, because they, they are almost naturally supernatural gifts. You know, yeah. they are gifts that naturally you might be good at, um, but then you begin to use them for the Lord and, you know, then they become a real gift. They could become a gift to the body um but yeah yeah i wonder as well as while we're while we're kind of going through compiling this list of gifts are there any that aren't explicitly mentioned in in the scripture in these lists that you feel might fit the category of a spiritual gift Ooh. so i can think of a couple off the top of my head that seem okay. like maybe they might be so i would say um intercession maybe so yeah i think you know we can all intercede we can all um operate as intercessors in our prayer wow. life but there are there seems to me that there are some people who you know when they pray there's something different happening in that moment yeah. I, whether that's a manifestation of a gift of faith through that prayer that they're praying i don't know but to me i would say maybe that that's possible one the other one i would think would be um dream interpretation so again, whether you could say that might be a sort of distinguishing between spirit, prophecy, revelation mm. type gift, but um, I, that would be the other one that would kind of come to mind. I don't know if you've, any thoughts on any others. Um, I've never thought about that before, although I do think you're right about intercession. Absolutely. And I think the gift necessarily isn't about how powerful you sound when you pray, though. Mm. I think it's more to do with longevity. And, you know, uh, I, with the best will in the world, I cannot pray for hours and hours and hours. I run out of things to say and I run out of things to say in a, in 20 minutes of prayer. You know, and so my my prayer time is half spent talking to God and half spent listening to God and half spent worshipping God. And, you know, it, it's it's I can worship him and, and speak, but I often find it very difficult to really focus on what I'm praying for especially if it's like people as well mm. you know, I can bring names to him and then I'm like mm, yeah uh, well uh, yeah unless you're gonna unless he's gonna give me a word of knowledge and I know exactly what to pray for I find it really difficult but then there are others you know have you seen that um that really cheesy American Christian um film which is absolutely brilliant but you know it's one of these really cheesy ones about the prayer what the prayer room where this so. oh, it's, it's a great film um, about this woman who um, had had a room in her house that was the prayer room. Um, I can't, is it called War Room or something like that? I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, there are people that, you know, literally live to pray and they have this gift of intercession that they can pray for hours and hours and hours. And my goodness, you know, I look at them and think, wow, I, would I love to have that gift or not? I'm not sure. I haven't. I haven't got it. That's for sure. Um, but some people definitely have. So I'm definitely with you there on intercession. Definitely. Uh, okay. Right. So let's. Um, so we talked a bit about this on Sunday, and I think we mentioned this again before we went live tonight about. Um, so the scripture that we looked at predominantly on Sunday was the first half of first Corinthians 12, where the list is contained. Um, but we talked about um, how it says there that the, each gift is um, a manifestation of the spirit, that they are different gifts with different purposes, different empowerings and different effects, but they all come from the one and the same spirit. They're all manifestations of the spirit. And we, we talked about this um, sort of understanding of that in the, when we talk about gifts, we should see them as the, the presence of the holy spirit with a with a c rather than the presence that the holy spirit gives with a t and s so they're not like gifts in the same way that you wrap up a gift and you stick it under the christmas tree and, and it, it, it's separate to who you are but the, the the gifts of the spirit are the holy spirit giving himself and manifesting himself through the operation of those gifts in the church for the common good from that foundation of love to see the church built up, edified, strengthened, encouraged, uh, and equipped for the work that God has, has placed on the church to do. So um, was there anything you wanted to add to that, well, Claire? At first glance, I really liked that. And I, and I said to you, didn't I, tonight before we started, that I really like that. That's really good because you'd written it on the notes because I wasn't there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was working. And I haven't had a chance to catch up either because I've worked, I've 
just had so much work on today. Actually, this week, I could have done it today, actually, when I had no internet, but I had other things to do. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no internet, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hebrews is far more important. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So when I first read that, I was like, oh, I like that. I like that. But actually, the more I think about it, the more I can see it's shortcoming. So your little phrase that you put was that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are the presence of God, as in dwelling within a presence, rather than the presence, as in gifts, wrapped up under the Christmas tree of God. Um, but actually... It's more than the presence of God. It's the empowering presence of God. Right. So if you are a Christian, if you have gone through regeneration, if the Holy Spirit has rebirthed you, regenerated you, then his presence is in you. Um, but that is that. The proof of that is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. So the, the fruit of the Spirit is what tells you that the Holy Spirit is present. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then it's the gifts of the Spirit that are given once that empowering presence of the Holy Spirit has been either activated or come upon you or however you want to think about it, but that baptism or being filled with the Holy Spirit will result in gifts. And also the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S of God, um, it is a little bit like that because you have to receive it and you have to yeah. unwrap it and you have to be prepared to use it otherwise it's a gift that is no good to anyone yeah yeah actually on second thoughts actually that phrase i still like it but it has got its shortcomings so yeah i like that i like the the thought as, as i said to you it wasn't a phrase that was original with me um, I, thought, I thought it was yours i was like i really like that oh no yeah it was that good i would have written the book that i read where i got it from but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but i do i do like it because i think what it does is what we can so often miss when we're talking about spiritual gifts is it does remind us that this is this is more than just something we've been this is more than something we've been given this is someone yes. we've been given yeah. uh, and uh, but you're right in that there, there is an important part about the empowering presence of, of the spirit in that. And um, yeah, so where did we get to? I've gone off on a little tangent now. What were we talking about? <laughs> um, the presence and presence. That's it. Where were you going with it? Yeah, I don't know where I was going with it. <laughs> so so um, now I've lost my screen. There you are. You're back. So we looked at on sunday we looked at after we kind of set um a bit of an outline of this subject and set some context read through um the first part of first corinthians uh, 12 we looked at just two of the gifts from the list here so we looked at the utterance uh, or the word of wisdom and knowledge and uh, we looked at a little bit of um kind of understanding what it is, looked at maybe what it isn't, and looked at some examples of where this had been played out in scriptures. So I thought it would be good for us just to a quick refresher on that. And then maybe, if you're a game player, we could share a couple of stories of where we've either experienced these gifts ourselves, operated them in, our, uh, operated in them ourselves, or we've witnessed it, seen it happen, um, just to kind of give people a little bit of an illustration about these gifts but i think one of the important things that um i mentioned on sunday is that with these gifts um we like or certainly i like <laughs> i'm sure there's many of others out there who like to be able to put labels on things to categorize things to be able to uh, you know complement cop compend put things in a box we'll say it that way you know um and kind of divvy them up and have clear oh, mentalize I was, I was sat here thinking what word was he trying to that's say? the one i was trying to say <laughs> compartmentalize that's the one compartmentalize that's it we like to do that <laughs> but actually i think um if we try and do that too much with some of these gifts then yeah we we end up kind of we'll go down avenues that we shouldn't go down and actually there is a lot of crossover here and i heard them described uh, just today actually as um, almost like colors of the rainbow so like there are distinctions in the colors of the rainbow, but there are points at which those colors kind of bleed into one another and cross mm -hmm. over into one another. And if we have that thinking of um, the, the, the gifts are the manifestation of the spirit, 
then that's kind of we should absolutely expect that to be the case and yeah. so so you mean when, things like was that a word of knowledge or was it a word of wisdom let's not worry too much about what it actually was because you know actually like you say the lines are blurry it yeah. really doesn't matter it was yeah. by the spirit and that's the important yeah. thing I, I think i think you could say i mean we did this a little bit on sunday we looked at some examples of where jesus operates in some of these gifts where the apostles are operating in some of these gifts and i think we were able to say or at least to sort of think that was possibly a word of knowledge that was possibly a word of wisdom one of the challenges is that actually this is the only time we actually hear this phrase appear in all of scripture it doesn't appear anywhere else it's only in first corinthians 12 so it's not like after an event that Luke's there writing in his gospel, and then Jesus stood up and uttered a word of knowledge. He doesn't say that, um, even though the the event that he might be describing there might look like what we would understand a word of knowledge to look like in its operation. So I think it's interesting you say that because he could have done that because Paul's letters were written before the gospels, so he could have done that. He could have done that, yeah, and yeah. presumably would have, especially Luke would have read those letters. So yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that would have been helpful. I've never yeah. thought of that before. <laughs> um, I feel another study coming on. Honestly, <laughs> I just need to do a PhD. Choose one thing, do a PhD, get it out my system. <laughs> yeah, but then you want to do five more. That will be how it works. <laughs> so, uh, so, we, so we talked about this, you know. Um, it's difficult to distinguish too much between particularly these kind of gifts uh, uh, um, yeah. and what we we talked about what this gift isn't so these these words of knowledge words of wisdom they're not the same wisdom and knowledge that are open and available to every believer through things like study of scripture through growth um, sanctification yeah. um, living in a community of believers and growing in in sort of maturity that is a type of, of wisdom and a type of knowledge. And that's a very valuable type of wisdom and knowledge. And the gift of a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge is not a replacement for that kind of yeah. wisdom and knowledge. Um, it's not a shortcut. You can't shortcut um, to that wisdom and that knowledge that comes through that time and devotion to um, scripture, to prayer, to yeah. community and all those other things. What these gifts are actually, they're far more revelatory in their nature and yeah. they're closer to something like prophecy uh, than they are to, um, you know, wisdom or knowledge that we might attribute to somebody who's grown very wise after years of studying a particular yeah. subject. So um, I think broadly what we said is that a word of knowledge is insight, supernatural insight that the Holy Spirit gives to a person about another person. And it pertains to the uh, what, the what of their life. Uh, word of wisdom, supernatural insight pertaining to the um, uh, how. So like knowledge is the what's happened and wisdom would be the and how has that happened or, or, or how that might be outworked um, in, in life or in a decision that somebody was facing or... Um, and I'm trying to think of trying to think of some of the examples. Yeah, that we yeah. so words of wisdom are things that um, I've heard far less of than words of knowledge, or far fewer. Sorry, English, mm -hmm. far fewer words of wisdom than I've heard words of knowledge. Um, but how I would describe it would be a wisdom that is given that would not be naturally expected. So, so wisdom in a very young person. So that that's my. Mm -hmm biggest example actually of of um of a word of wisdom which i can share in a minute but something in a young person that um that that actually sounds more like experience or wisdom something that god has given them and for a word of knowledge something that the person could not have known in any other way as well so it's like the gift of tongues so the gift of tongues is speaking in um another language that you haven't learned and so wisdom and knowledge are speaking in that situation of wisdom or knowledge with something that you haven't learned so mm -hmm. you haven't gone and read it you haven't gone and found out about it um and and so and that actually makes um the whole prayer thing really difficult as well i find it anyway because 
Um, the older I get, the more people I know, and the more I know about them, and then you pray for them, and then you're just like, is this me or is this you, Lord? And, you know, and I find myself constantly saying things like, you know, this might just be me, but because you know people's situations. And so how much does that bleed into yeah. what you're then saying? Um, but, yeah, so it's so it's a, an utterance of wisdom or an utterance. See, now we know why it's utterance. I like this is the only word that fits there, isn't it? Yeah. It's utterance of something wise or the utterance of some knowledge that you could not possibly have known for yourself or studied or or attained. Yeah. So, so I think some of the some of the examples we use from scripture when talking about this, um, just thinking back to Sunday, was uh, we talked about Jesus with the woman at the well, yeah, who uh, has the insight into the fact that she has been married five times and the man that she's with now is not her husband. That's an example of a. I think that's a pretty clear example of a word of knowledge. Um, go on, that sounded like a. I'm not so sure. See, I, I, let's not get into Johannine study now, but for me, that's not a word of knowledge because it's in John's gospel where John's main message all the way through is that Jesus is God, that he is the eternal logos, that he was pre-existent. So actually, Jesus utters those words as God. It, it's, not, it's actually a display of omniscience rather than a word of knowledge if you're going to look at John's gospel in its in its context. But I, I get what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying. Give me any other gospel and I'll say yes. Yeah, so let's, uh, so let's go to Mark's gospel then and uh, we'll talk about the uh, paralytic when he's healed. And um, so Jesus heals the, heals the man, says your sins are forgiven, get up and walk. And then the, the Pharisees and the scribes don't say anything, but Jesus says, knowing what was in their heart, says to you, which is easier um, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk. Yeah. Uh, and so again, I think that's a word of knowledge. Jesus has insight and perception into what's going on on the inside of, of yeah. these of these men in that moment. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we use some other examples from the Book of Acts as well. I think um, Peter with Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, yeah. Obviously, more so with Ananias. Um, I think with Sapphira having sort of happens three hours later. Peter already knows. He already has that insight. But with Ananias, he discerns or gets the insight into the fact that Ananias is lying about how much he got for the field and saying he got this much and saying it's the full amount when it's not the full amount. Pretty clear, I think, again, example that he's getting this knowledge that he might not otherwise have true insight from the Holy Spirit. Um, I think words of wisdom, like you say, are probably a little bit trickier. Um, I mm. think probably ones that we looked at on Sunday were um, the other Ananias when he goes to Saul, um, sort of explaining what um, God has shown him in a vision, um, maybe maybe a word of wisdom. I'm not going to say with any certainty, um, but he certainly has a he, he has a revelation. It comes in the form of a vision, comes in the form of a dream, doesn't it? But and then he goes and he gives that information to uh to Saul at that time which I think might be an example of a word of wisdom he's obviously gained that insight supernaturally mm -hmm. uh, and now he goes and delivers that um and I'm trying to think of others that we gave we talked about we talked about Paul with Elimaeus um the sorcerer who's seeking to oppose him in Acts 15 and um again I think Saul at uh, Paul at this point has uh, insight that could be both of those gifts in operation, word of knowledge and uh, word of wisdom. But as we sort of said, I, I think it's kind of difficult to pin these down, especially because it's not, you know, they're not given that label in the scripture. And so we don't want to apply it where it's not given. But I think. And also some of it's concerning of spirits as well. Yeah. You know, so like Paul with the, um, with the, with the possessed girl, you know, and she's mm. crying out, I know who you are, son of the most high God. And, and I know who you are, I know who these people are. And Paul it turns around and casts the demon out of her. You know, I mean, he knew there was a demon there. Was that a word of knowledge? Was it discerning between spirits? Was it a word of wisdom in knowing what to do um, as that happened? So yeah, yeah there's, there's blurry, blurry lines all the time. And maybe they were, maybe it was all three, you know? Yeah. Maybe it was all three. And I think, I think that is what you see. And certainly I feel like that, 
it's, so, it's given my experience of seeing these gifts in uh, in operation and operating in them myself i feel like very often they are almost like a word of knowledge in particular can be like a key that opens the door for other manifestations of the spirit to flow other, other gifts to yeah. come to the fore or or for people to uh receive uh, the gospel to receive salvation yeah. um and certainly i think when you know when people understand that you've got supernatural insight into something that you shouldn't know but yet somehow god has revealed this to you whether that's you know yeah. you hear stories about people's driver's license being numbers being read out in the middle of a church service or you know it's just stuff that you would have no way of knowing uh, and people yeah people receiving that i think it opens the door and actually i, I wonder if um you, you know all these how many of these gifts are actually linked together and you see operate at the same time does yeah yeah does operating in a word of knowledge then impart a gift of faith to believe for a healing yeah and all of this so all of these things flowing oh, 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 <clears throat> you've got paul in the shipwreck and he says we're not going to die because i've got to preach the gospel to the king you know yeah. to, to, to this um who was it he was going to see was it um yeah he was going to Rome and so so what's that is that word of knowledge is that um is that faith what what is that and it's just so that it, the, the new testament is peppered with all of these um different accounts and examples and spending much time on trying to discern what they are is far less important than actually um learning from them and, and and wanting to to replicate them you know to to replicate is that right reciprocate no reci replicate yeah yeah <laughs> something back isn't it yeah so you want to you want to you want that you want that gift you you know desire gifts pursue love and desire spiritual gifts um but yeah there's they're, they're all over the place paul when he when he um when they told they tell him now here's here's the thing they they tell him he shouldn't go to Jerusalem because he's going to be bound and he's going to be you know it, it's going to be beaten yeah. and he says well I'm, well God told me I'm going anyway yeah. so, so why did God tell them that he was going to be bound and beaten and then Paul yeah. say oh well God told me I've got to go anyway you know it's almost like yeah which one was that was that yeah well, I, th I think in that case you've got you've got prophecy in operation haven't you yeah. but I think what you've got is a what the way i read that anyway is that you've got these prophets or people operating in, in prophecy coming to paul and say if you go to jerusalem you're going to get bound and yeah. you're going to be put in chains and there and obviously thinking that you know if you thought that about whoever you would probably advise them not to go oh, no, because no. it seems like a warning doesn't it <laughs> and yet i think actually it's probably an encouragement to paul because he kind of he'd already know knew that it was going to happen and so when it did happen it was like, well, God's just demonstrated again that he's ordained it. No, he will use yeah, it yeah. and he will turn it for his good. And obviously he does. Yeah. He gets he gets the the free boat ride, calamitous boat ride to, to Rome, doesn't he? Uh, to, to complete his mission. Um but what I think what 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 is the the lesson from that um piece of scripture there is that we've got to be really careful about uh, so when it comes to prophecy, you have the revelation, which is an infallible thing that comes from God. It's infallible in its nature. So it's so it's always going to be 100 percent bang on our interpretation of that revelation and our application of that revelation is subject to our non perfection. <laughs> yeah. So we can we can add things in and we can interpret incorrectly and we can apply incorrectly. And I think what you have there is a is an example of. Uh, a, a right prophecy because that is what happens but a wrong application an interpretation in the advice yeah. yeah yeah so um should we have a should we should we exchange a couple of stories then of times where we've seen this um words of wisdom or at best what we can discern as words of wisdom word of knowledge and, and maybe what's happened in in um kind of the aftermath or the or the uh, the flow of those gifts being operated in um so you mentioned one earlier um, do you want to kick off with that? Where you're going to talk about a young yeah. person who's operated in in um, a word of wisdom? So the so the thing is, when you when you're in ministry, honestly, it, you see quite this quite a lot. So every time you pray for somebody, mm -hmm. you're asking God for a word of knowledge. You're asking Him yeah. to be able to say the right things for this person. So it does happen a lot, and and we sort of get used to it when we're because we believe that we we need to be naturally prophetic, that we should be prophetic at all times. And we should be listening to the Holy Spirit and we should be 
saying what he wants us to say. So the times that really stand out to me are the times when it has happened to me rather than when I've actually yeah. used the gift myself. So the first, I think the first word of knowledge I ever received and recognised and and actually um, changed my, my perspective on things was when I was pregnant with my youngest son, Jacob, who's now 26. And I was at St. Lawrence's Church in Scalenthorpe and um and i did not want this baby so i'd had um postnatal depression after alice and nathan and alice had been born quite close together within two years and we were now another five years down the line and um, and i found myself pregnant again and when i filled it so in those days they don't do this now <coughs> a bit <coughs> excuse me in those days you had to fill in a form, literally with pen and paper. Um, in those days, I sound like I'm ancient. It was, it was 1996. Um, oh gosh! <laughs> and and you had to fill in the form. And one of the questions on the form was, "How do you feel about your pregnancy?" And on the first two forms that I'd filled in for Nathan for Alice, I put on the form ecstatic. I I, I thought, what a stupid question. Why do people ask that question? That of course I feel amazing. I feel ecstatic. I've got, you know, I'm going to have babies. But when I had Jacob, um, it was a totally different. It was totally different. And I said, um, devastated. That was the answer that I put on the form. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that I was too old. I didn't want another child. Things with two children had been really quite relatively easy, and I didn't want to upset the apple cart. And you know, and. But here I was pregnant. And um, I didn't tell anybody that I didn't want this baby. But I will say to you now, if I'm being absolutely open and honest, the only reason I did not have an abortion is because I don't believe in abortion, not because I wanted to have that child. Jacob knows all of this, by the way. We call him our surprise. Um, and he says, you didn't want me. And he knows all of this. Um, and so... I hadn't told anybody, but I was really sinking into a, quite a depressed um, state as uh, the, the doctor knew, the doctor knew how I felt, um, but nobody else really knew apart from my husband. Um, and then I went to church um, one day and I hadn't told anybody that I was pregnant. <clears throat> and a woman came over to me, her, name's, her name is Linda, and I actually saw her a couple of years ago and reminded her of this, she didn't remember a thing, but I... I was quite surprised to hear how much it had affected me. Um, and she came to me and said, God gave me a word for you. And I said, oh, yeah, OK, what's that? She said, this baby is his, not yours. You have no right to not want it. And he is going to be used to bring thousands of people to Christ. And I literally, at that, honestly, I was just like completely blindsided. Um, it, uh, yeah, I, I can't explain to you how that felt. Um, there was a mixture of guilt and um, remorse and repentance and, you know, fear and amazement and awe. And and I'm just like, wow. And, and all the way through it, I was thinking, she said, he, is it a boy? Because <laughs> in that case, she didn't know either. You didn't know. Um, and so... Yeah, uh, that cha that absolutely yeah. changed my life. And through the nine months of that pregnancy, I went from being a Sunday Christian who got involved in lots of things like childcare and all the rest of it, but really was it was all about Jesus being my friend and my saviour rather than Lord of my life, um, to the point where everything I had was his. Even to the point that on the day that Jacob was born, and there was a very good chance, I think I mentioned this before, that we were both going to die. We'd had what's called a placental abruption, which is where the, the placenta had broken in half and had to begun to be born before the baby was, which is very, very dangerous. Yeah. And we were rushed down to theatre. Um, as I left my husband, I was able to say to him, it's fine. If God wants to take this baby now, it's absolutely fine because of what he's done in me while I've been carrying him. 
and I and I really meant it. I meant it. And and that was a that was a step for Dave as well because it was at it was at Jacob's birth because of that trauma that he actually because of that I then had an emergency or crash section cesarean section couldn't drive for six weeks. Dave had to take me to church. Decided he got bored with coming down, going away again, coming back and picking me up. So decided to stay, and in that six weeks, got saved. And wow. um, yeah, so it, so the and I always said as part of my testimony and his testimony as well that you know that was the first one that Jacob brought to the Lord, um, as as that prophecy had said. And so really, really powerful, really, really powerful, and mm. um, and. Yeah, I saw Linda a few a few years ago and uh, and told her, and she was amazed at the difference it had had, and couldn't even remember saying it to me. But yeah, that's the power of a word of knowledge. Yeah, and that's a I think that's a wonderful example of just how these gifts do what Paul tells us they do: that they edify, they encourage, they strengthen the body, they build up the church, and exactly you know in your even though it was a reprimand, it was a reprimand for me. This is his baby, not yours, and you have no right to not want it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was, I, it's like a slap around the face. I mean, and that's a bold word, isn't it? I mean, that yeah. takes some courage. Bless Linda. Oh, I don't know if I've ever met her, but bless yeah, her. Absolutely. Wow. That takes a lot of courage to deliver a word. And I, I guess that, I mean, there's a, the, there's a sense there that you get of, I guess that almost like the the knowing you have when you when you're on when you're the one who's receiving the word to give, there is a there is a deeper sense of hey this is this is not just me thinking this up this is God actually wanting to wanting to share a word now that that can be really subtle um, it's not always like blinding nervous or lightning from heaven or like you know, open up, open up your Bible and the words there for, for you to go and deliver. It can be really subtle, but even when, when you learn to listen and hear, yeah. even the, the, the subtle ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us yeah. become discernible from sort of our everyday experience of, you know, information that comes at us from all the other avenues. I remember, um, I think probably in one of our early services, you know, when we've met um, to to pray and maybe I had we had like maybe 20 people in the room um on one of us and this is probably a couple of years ago now and um we were we were all just praying and I, I just had this sense that there was somebody in the room and this was this was really subtle like it wasn't it wasn't really blindingly obvious it wasn't like a sledgehammer over the head or anything it was just a real subtle sense that there's somebody in the room who's been in a car crash and it's affected their, uh, I remember that their, their legs. I, well, and, I, uh, I remember that. I'm sure I do. Yeah. I, well, I remember sharing that word, thinking, "Well, you know, if that's <laughs> that's God, you've got to share it, haven't you?" And, yeah, and, um, it's proof specific. And there was somebody. There was somebody in that in the um, in the room who who'd had that experience. You know, been in a car crash, injured their legs, and. You know, we talked about how sometimes that, like a word of knowledge is, is a key in a door that opens up the door for yeah. other things. You know, on this occasion, um, you know, I, I, I prayed for this person um, afterwards for a healing. I don't, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know if that's ever happened. Okay. So I, I don't know whether that's the case or whether there's more at play there or not. Maybe, maybe, maybe there has been some level of healing or improvement. I don't know. Um, but maybe that wasn't the purpose of, of the not maybe it was just uh they needed to know that god sees god knows god yeah god cares and it, you know it didn't go unnoticed and it's that same sense of there's a there's a revelation that you know you couldn't get that naturally uh and hopefully that was an encouragement to this person um it, it certainly seemed so at the time um but uh, yeah uh one example uh i think of have you got any examples of times where either you or somebody you know has operated in a word of wisdom? Well, I've got one that I think was a word of wisdom because, so again, it was Jacob actually. Um, there really is a, God's really got a plan for that boy. He really needs to, uh, anyway. Um, so, he, and he knows all this. He, know, he knows the word that's spoken over him. He knows what Linda said. He knows all of that. Um but yeah, so it was um, 
when my husband had had his affair that ended the marriage, and remember this is someone that Jacob knew, um, I, I, I mean, you can imagine how upset I was. You, you, I've talked about it at length, haven't I? And, and it, it got to the point where I had a heart attack because of the trauma of it all. But in the upset, in the, the week after week after week of me just not recovering and doing all sorts of things that, you know, I never thought I'd do again, like drinking a whole bottle of wine and, you know, just, um, just going between this, um, yo-yoing between total dependence on God and crying out to him and then finding something that will numb the effects of how I was feeling. And Jacob just said to me, he looked at me and he looked me right in the eye and he said, mum, you need to let this happen because it's going to be better. And I was like, what? What do you mean it's going to be better? And he said, it will be better. He said, it will be better. And at the time, I didn't really think oh that's a word of wisdom but now I look back on it he was 17 16 16 17 he had no understanding or um experience of divorced parents he had no understanding or experience of um this level of trauma that can then settle and, and you know and but as I look back that was God speaking um, it wasn't long after that that I, that I then had the heart attack and and it was that 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 then spurred me on to I'm not doing this anymore. The toxicity of this whole situation is actually killing me. It's physically killing me and it's breaking my heart literally and I have to do something about this. Um, and there was my consultant as well saying, no woman, no man is worth the tears that puts a 47 year old woman in my cardiac high dependency unit. And I was like, well, there's a word from God, but he was a Muslim, so it wasn't a real one. But anyway, God used it to speak to me. But as I look back now and I see how God has brought me through that and what he is now doing in me and with me because mm. I am free from that situation. And I had, I, I had no idea at the time when I was in it, even when I felt the marriage was happy. I now know that my husband was never happy and, and had been using pornography for a very long time. He had affairs that I didn't know about. Um, and so there were women all the way through. And, and so bringing me out and, and then setting me on a rock and then using me in ministry, which to an extent that I would never have been able to achieve had I still been married to, to my husband. Um, yeah, it's better. It's absolutely 100% better. And I see that as a word of wisdom rather than a word of knowledge because he had no way of knowing, of, of having that wisdom. And now I look back and see that it was wisdom. It was, it was God saying to me, you know, this is going to be better. Trust me, I'm wise. Trust me, I'm wise. I know what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I think was a word of wisdom i don't really know if it was but i i think it was and i believe that god has has highlighted it to me as as being such as well which is why i think i remember it and um, other than that i don't think i really have heard many words that are completely discerned as wisdom rather yeah. than a, rather than a word of knowledge hmm. yeah it's, it's a funny one isn't it i was just musing over that as you were saying it it's like I don't even know. Would you be fully aware of when you're operating in a word of wisdom? Maybe not. I because I, I, I could totally foresee um, times where you were giving advice or or you know invited instruction to somebody, yeah. and you were operating out that gift. But actually, in your awareness, it, it just felt like you know you were just sharing your thoughts on it. Yeah, and actually, the other person's perspective on it might be, oh, do you know what? Actually, that that is a word, a, a real word. Yeah. Of wisdom. And so, I actually, mean, I think it might be harder to discern when you're operating in a word of wisdom. Yeah, far easier to discern. You know, you've operated in in a word of knowledge. Um, I can give another example of of something that I don't, I wouldn't say was a word of knowledge because there wasn't there wasn't an utterance involved. But I, I think it's a good example of the way in which this kind of revelatory side of the gifts maybe bleed into one another. So I don't know what I'd call this. 
um, but it was certainly supernatural. Um, so I, I had this experience where I'd gone to visit, um, I'd actually gone to visit Steve Wendells, our friend uh, who used to pastor the church at um, Southall. And I'd had a great time with him, fantastic time with him. But I, and he lives out that that way. It's uh, about 45 minutes uh, from where I live. So I was making my way back and I'd met him mid morning. So it's just getting on to lunchtime. And I thought, do you know, I'm going to stop and grab some lunch at Newark, which is about halfway. Um, and I thought, I'll go, you know, I'll go to McDonald's. But I was driving. So what I normally do when I go to McDonald's is, I don't know what other people do this, but this is maybe because I'm an introvert. I go into the McDonald's, I order my food, I take it out to my car and eat it by myself, right? Um, Why don't but, you go through the drive through to get it and then eat it in your car? Why do you get out and go into the shop? Well, I think, you know, I like to see the people and order, oh, okay. order stuff in the shop. And then... It's so a half an inch of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Anyway, digress. Go and carry on. Yeah. And um, so, but this occasion, I was actually driving my wife's car. I was driving Helen's car. So I thought, I don't want to make the car smell of McDonald's, primarily because I don't want to get caught for the fact that I've had a McDonald's, or okay? <laughs> so... Um, this is I, a word of wisdom, please. I went into the McDonald's, but I thought, you know... I. I I had a really good time with Steve. I really felt like you know faith was built up, and it was he's always a great guy. Whenever you see him, and, and uh, just such a lovely guy, and we'd had a wonderful time. So I just thought, do you know what? shall I have a bit of fun? And I just asked God, you know, is there anybody in here that you want me to speak to? Wow! And um, I got this impression, and it was like um, two things came to mind. So the first was this this picture of like black jacket, and separately the word bomber right bomber so it wasn't black bomber jacket it was black jacket and the word bomber oh i was like who on earth do you want me to speak to so is this from you lord i'm not sure like who is this that you want me to speak to so I, I, anyway so th those were the two the two things that i got and i really felt like you know this feels like this is god and um so parked up went into the mcdonald's ordered my food and kind of sat down and cast around you know looking so where's the person in the black jacket uh looked around nobody in there wearing a black jacket let alone uh, the bomber thing no idea so all right okay i just sit and enjoy my lunch maybe i just misheard you know mis misunderstood so that was there sitting eating my lunch uh and then so i was sat on a table and you know how they put those machines in now where you can order your food and the touch yeah. screens where you order your food at McDonald's. Um, so I was sat there eating. I had a clear view of these machines of people coming in and out. And as I was sat there eating my whatever it was, burger and fries, there was a chap who um, was ordering at the machine facing me. So he had, But I could see he had a black jacket on. So he ordered his food and then he turned around and on the back of his jacket, it said Lincoln County Bombers. And I almost fell off my seat and choked on my flies at that point. So I was like, wow, that was uh, that was super cool. And um, so then I was like, then I went into almost like full panic mode because I was like, right, okay, so God's, God's pinpointed this guy to me in advance. Now I've got to go and speak to him. So here's me, introvert, would normally be eating in his car, eating in the restaurant. I've got to go speak to this guy. So I was like, okay, Lord, if I'm going to do this, you're going to have to give me what it is that I need to say. I'm going to be fully reliant on you in this one. Um, so I prayed and prayed and prayed and like, it was nothing. There was nothing. And then I was there and I was like, so what is this all about? Because, uh, you know, I trust that you're going to give me what I need to say to this person. And then I really felt this, I felt this really strongly. Otherwise I would have, I didn't go and speak to him. And but I would have done if I felt that was the right thing, but I felt really strongly that God said to me in this moment, he said, this wasn't so that you can go and speak to him but this was so that you know that I'm speaking to you. Wow. And, and, and I felt, you know, that I felt really encouraged by that, but it wasn't a word of wisdom and it wasn't a word of knowledge. Yeah. But I don't know what I would call it. If I was going to, if I was going to try and put a label on it, it was certainly a supernatural experience. It was, it was, a, wonderful, it was a revelatory experience for yeah. sure. And, and I know there'll be multiple people who've, um, who've experienced a similar sort of thing. I think, I think the, the lingo for that kind of thing is a, uh, it's called treasure hunting. I think it's something that is it? people people do. You know, so um, if you if, if anybody wants to have a go, a bit of treasure hunting, one day maybe perhaps we can do that as part of a, a, an evangelistic outreach or something at, at, at church. You know, we'll get together, we'll pray, ask God to give us some people. Oh, and, okay, and see that's if... what you mean. Yeah, see, this is why I'm not an evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Treasure hunting. Exciting and terrifying, but wonderfully, oh, yeah. wonderfully edifying at the same time. Yeah, great, great thing. I, I you know, I, I think of other times of experience. I think experience, like you were saying, experiencing words of wisdom. Certainly, I remember um, one time, I think when Gebhardt was here. Um, for those who don't know, Gebhardt's a um, prophet who operates in South Africa and um, has come to visit us a couple of occasions. And uh, this is actually just um so the point that he came over this time i'm thinking of was i think maybe one of the first first times i remember him being here and, and ministering uh, and he was going around the room in the way that he does prophesying over people uh, and he spoke to helen and i remember it really clearly oh, because he said yeah my, my wife yeah he, he spoke to my wife i remember it really clearly because he said to her something is about to be birthed out of you and then he went on to continue the prophecy but she was pregnant with our first child at the time uh, and nobody else in that room knew and she was um maybe like i don't know six eight weeks something like that oh, so wow. before we were telling anybody um so i remember that really distinctly as like, that, mm. that's a, that's a that's a word of uh knowledge right there yeah. so yeah i mean that, that, brilliant isn't it to to know these to experience these things and, and to hear the stories that people have to share i think they're re really really encouraging um but god's good right he's yeah. he always he always prepares us for it we've got time for another one what time is it so uh, you just reminded me of an absolutely hilarious one that um so this was way back gosh 20 years ago and my little sister i'd been praying for her for a long time that a Christian would come along and um, and witness to her. And um, you know what it's like, it's really difficult to speak to your own family about that sort of thing. So I've been praying for her that um, a Christian would come along. Anyway, she says to me, um, when you're over, at, when we're all over at mum's at Christmas, my new boyfriend's going to be there. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What's his name? His name's Christian, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, God, that was not what I meant. I meant I wanted someone to witness to her, not send her a boyfriend that's called Christian. Oh, what about all of this? Anyway, we, went, we go over to mum's, I don't know if it's Christmas or Easter or whatever. And as I'm introduced to him, God gives me a word for him. Right. So this is a young couple that have had, as far as I'm aware, definitely my sister it wasn't in church, had no idea who this guy was. Um, but, you know, he was sleeping with my sister. So I, all I could think of was that, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't saved and um and he looked really rough he had like a scar down his cheek and, and like, he was quite scary and and god gave me a word for him and and i i obviously didn't utter it at that point and i went away and i prayed about it and i was like god i, I can't do this i can't <laughs> do this if if you want me to you know in the middle of all of my family christmas celebrations when no one else is a christian my little sister who knows nothing about about what you know who i am or what i do or the fact that i've even become a christian um and this is her boyfriend and this is going to be so embarrassing for her you know you're going to have to give me more than that so you're going to have to if you really want me to give him this word then you're going to have to show me that he's ready to receive it before i speak and i went out and sat down in the lounge and he said to me Kate tells me you're a Christian. And I went, I am, yes. And he went, that's amazing. He said, I got saved in prison. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I went, oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, in that case then. <laughs> and I gave him this word. Now, they, they it, just hilarious, really. It just made me laugh, the whole Christian thing, praying for a Christian. They were together a very, very long time. They had four children together and then he wow. he began to relapse and ended up in prison again and he's back on it now and he's married to someone else and and you know and came through in the end um and and he now works i think in a rehab um a christian rehab um but yeah the way god just like you know and i'm like i'm too scared to do this i can't do it and you can almost see god in heaven going all right <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah it's the gideon thing isn't it it's like, i just put a fleece out that was the just, words yeah. that was the words that he's a gideon. <laughs> you are a gideon you are a small man and, and you but you're more than you think and oh I, the irony 
the irony that that was. There you the go. Way. There you Love go. There's a lot of knowledge. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so I thought it might be good to close by maybe just maybe there's some people out there who are thinking like, oh, I've never really operated in a word of wisdom. I've never experienced that. I've never had a, a word of knowledge. Um, I'd love to experience. Are there any things that we that you can do in order to make it more likely that you might be the recipient of one of these gifts? So we know in Scripture that it tells us, you know, that the Holy Spirit portions these gifts as he wills. So it's, it's up to the Holy Spirit to give these gifts. But we also know that God is a good father and he loves to give gifts to his children and that these things are given for the building up of, of the body and for the common good. And so that, you know, even from the stories that we've shared tonight, they're great encouragements, they're great ways at which people are spurred on in their life following Jesus. So I've got to believe that God, who is generous, loves to give these gifts frequently and actually we're far more likely to receive them um, than maybe we think we are because yeah. God is good and he's generous and he loves us and these gifts are good when they're uh, when they're worked out from that foundation of love. So well, it's that verse in Luke, isn't it? That you know if a father when asked for bread would give wouldn't no what yeah. is it? No a father that is asked for bread would not give his son a stone. Yeah. How much more does the does the father in heaven give um, when you are asking for the Holy Spirit, that is completely paraphrased. And I've got, it's in Luke, it's in Luke, and it, it's yeah. But that that's the thing. Yeah. You're asking him for bread. He's not going to give you a stone. You're yeah. asking him for the Holy Spirit. He's not going to give you a counterfeit or you know something awful. So you've got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose at all. So bearing in mind that I think what we've already established this evening is that we would both agree that these gifts, as far as we we're able to define them the utterance of wisdom and the utterance of knowledge are circumstantial gifts. They're, they're gifts that occur in the moment or they're gifts that the Holy Spirit gives for a particular circumstance. So they're not, you can't yeah. just turn them on. And, see, I can't walk into a room and have a word of knowledge about every person who's in that room. Yeah, absolutely. You can't, well, you could, but only if God decides. Yeah, only if God decides. Oh, yeah. So you're not doing it in your own strength. It's not a gift that you can turn on and off, but it, it is, it, it is a gift that is given because the channel between you and God is clear. Yeah. So you're saying to him, like in McDonald's, who do you want me to speak to here? And Or you're in church and you're saying, right, okay, we're about to start praying for people, Lord. And what do you want to tell me about some of these people? Or you might have yet laid hands on someone and be actually praying for them. And in your mind, you're also saying, Lord, what do you want me to say? Is there anything you want me to say? Um, so you're always open. That channel has to be always open. And what creates that channel being always open are things like being baptised in the Holy Spirit. Make sure you are. Um, if you've asked God for the gift, believe that he's given it to you because he has, because he doesn't disappoint his children. And so if you ask him for a word of knowledge, he will give you one. So don't double doubt yourself when things start to come to you. That is God because you've just asked him. Um, it's, it's a bit like when I'm in a prayer meeting and, you know, and I'm like, I, it would be very easy for me to just storm in and pray out of my own strength. You know, um, people know who I am and they would expect me to pray. I'm quite gregarious and I'm a, I'm a teacher. So it's easy for me to speak publicly. So it would be very easy for me to just pray. But what I tend to do is say, what do you want me to pray about? And usually I've got something in my head that God's given me. And if I'm not sure about it, if I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that's you, God, lo and behold, I tell you now, within 10 seconds, someone else in the room will start praying exactly the same thing. And I'm like, okay, sorry, yeah. should have been there then. Um, but, yeah, so don't don't assume he's not going to give because he does give. And he, he, he you are, if you're baptised in the Spirit, he will send his Holy Spirit. Um, and if you ask for him, for gifts, he will give them to you. And that's the biggest thing about the gift of tongues. I think many people believe they haven't been given it. They expect some sort of passive action to happen. You know, wake up one morning just speaking yeah. without actually having any control. And um, God gives the gifts. He's a good father and he gives good gifts. So, yeah. yeah. So I think that's really helpful because there's some really good, I guess, tips in there of how we can make it more likely that we'll see these kinds of things in our life. And I think that's what we're seeking to do just in this section as we come to a close, just if we can put together that sort of tip list of things that we can do to make it more likely. So we talked about, you know, having that open channel, being baptised in the spirit, um, being being 
I guess, um, having the faith to believe that God is good and he gives these gifts and, and taking him at his word, literally yeah. taking him at his word. Um, are there any other things that, that come to your mind in terms of um, things that we can do to best position ourselves to operate in this? Because one for me would be, you know, we're talking about words of wisdom and, and words of knowledge would be, um, I think, putting ourselves in a position where those things are going to be useful where if, if we're talking that these gifts are you know they're given in a particular circumstance putting ourselves in the place where we're walking in the midst of those circumstances so praying for people would be a big one for me um uh, would be you know inviting people to, to to be prayed for praying for them um certainly from my own experience i found that i operate in these kinds of gifts or the, the revelatory gifts in seasons in my life where I am, I guess, devouring the word of God. Yeah, I was just in, gonna say that. Yeah. In ways that I in 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 ways I don't always um so I regularly read scripture, but there are there have been seasons in my life where you know it's like you just eating this you're literally eating the book and it's just you, you're devouring chapter after chapter after chapter book after book after book going over and reading the same thing again and again and again uh, and, and god placing that hunger in me and and i found that particularly words of wisdom um like some of the examples that i've gave have come in seasons where i've been in that place um that's not always the case uh, and god is good and he you know he 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 will give those gifts still um, as we make ourselves available to him. But if we're, if we're talking about, you know, maybe you've never experienced these things and you'd like to, I always good advice to read the Bible. You've got something to weigh it against as well. Yeah. If you're not reading your Bible and God is speaking to you, how do you know it's God? Yeah. Because, you know, if you don't, if, if you don't know the things that God is likely to say, then how do you know it's God? It, what's very, very important is that we have to, as, as his sheep, we must hear his voice. So it tells us in John, you know, my sheep hear my voice and and, the, and we know it's him. And, but if but you, you have to practice that. You, ha you have to do the things that put you in a position to keep that channel open and listen for his voice. And if you don't know what the Bible says, then you are not going to be able to weigh up what what you are hearing against scripture you yeah. know and so and that's when you end up with some you know really sort of like heretical um prophesying yeah. you know you, god will god will speak to you but he will use what you've already got and so the what the more you know your scripture the, the easier it is for god to bring that to memory and say this is what i want you to say i remember what you were reading last week that's how I want you to say it, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, absolutely, you need to be, you definitely need to be reading it's, the Bible. It's like you said, it's the knowing of the voice, isn't it? Yeah. It's being a sheep who knows his voice. You want to you want to hear the voice of God, open your Bible. Because that is his word. The best way. The best it, way. Absolutely. If you're not reading your Bible, don't complain God doesn't speak to you because yeah. that is his word. So if you're not reading the word that he has already given, why how would you expect to hear what he's yes. got to say now? Yeah. yeah, and you learn to, you learn to discern, as we've already said, it's often very, very subtle when you when you feel these prompts of the Holy Spirit or revelations that he's he's dropping in here and there. But you learn to pick up, you learn to listen to what God sounds like through reading scripture, yeah. through meditating on it. And I think that's a great a great way to start if you've never operated in these gifts is, is to do that and carry on doing that don't stop just carry on doing it um yeah i, I think it might also be oh go on claire you're going to share another no, i was just going to say one other thing that just occurred to me as well is about remaining humble and knowing that these are gifts that god has given this mm. is not you so these are this is the reason that gifts of healing and gifts of miracles i believe are given for that particular moment in time so you can't walk around going you can you can be the christian that says i speak in tongues i mm. prophesy but you can't be the christian that says i do miracles i can heal yeah. okay because that is that's why god only in fact it is works plural of miracles and works plural yeah. of healings and so it's not you know he doesn't give you the ability to heal every single time it happens it's him working yeah. through you at his discretion 
not at yours. So you can ask God to give you a gift of healing for that particular moment, but you're never going to become the healer. You are always only the vessel. And so the more you understand that and you, and, you know, and, it's, and it's difficult sometimes because, you know, praying for people and getting words of knowledge, this is why it's, this is why you, you, you need to be in your Bible and have your character um, shaped as well, because it's a massive responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's quite easy to fall into that. Well, I'm really good at this. I like this. I'm good at that. Was good, wasn't it? I got it right again. You know, yeah. no, that that's that's fatal. And uh, yeah, stay humble. Read your Bible. Keep the channel open and listen for His voice. And so, so finally, I thought it might be good for us just to maybe share some sort of best practice ideas around how we might share a particular word of knowledge. Um, so in, if we're in a situation where we have a sense, maybe we're in a one-to-one, -one, maybe that's going to be a bit more of a common situation for most people. It's going to happen in a one-to-one -one scenario. You're in a conversation with a friend or um, somebody that you're praying with on Sunday or somebody in your small group, perhaps. How would you go about beginning to share with them the fact that you feel that the Holy Spirit has given you a word of knowledge? So... This is this is a more difficult question because it's different now to it was when when I first was filled with the spirit. So when I was first filled with the spirit, I was very unsure. I tell you what, it's not. It's not. It's not like the the spiritualist you see on telly. You know, there's someone here whose name begins with G. You know that no, it's, it, no, it's not that. It absolutely is not that. It's specific, and most of the time, I can still get it wrong. Believe me, I can still get it wrong. Um, very recently, somebody um, fed back to me about something that I'd got wrong, and you know, and you've just got to go. Okay, uh, I'm really sorry. You know, you can still get it wrong, um, but I tend to know whether it's God or not. Usually, because I I now am quick to recognise that there is no way I would have thought of this, and so therefore it it must be God, and I know His voice. But even so. I still tend to share, unless I'm absolutely sure, I tend to share in a similar way to when I first shared when I wasn't very sure. And I would say, um, I think God is saying. I never, ever, ever give it the thus said the Lord. God is saying. And yeah. I'm absolutely sure. So I might be in a moment of ministry where I'm absolutely confident that God is speaking because I can see the reaction. And then I might be a bit more specific and never do the shouty out thing. I tend to go down to someone's ear and speak to them, um, especially if I know that this is definitely from God. Um, if, I'm, if, if I'm not sure, if I'm not seeing a reaction that tells me God is speaking to this person, because some people are very quiet and they just take it in. And, and then, you know, six weeks later, they come back to you and go, Oh, when you spoke, you know, when God really spoke to you through you that time, you're like, oh, okay, that, yeah, you know, I, I hadn't realised because it wasn't very obvious. But I still always would go with the, I think God is saying this might be Him or it might be me. Um, I w you need to discern this for yourself. You need to test this. You will know if it's God speaking or if it isn't. Here's the information go away and, and pray about it. it uh, you know, it's it's just so easy to get it wrong. So I always want to be cautious rather than completely definite unless I'm unless I know for sure that God that it is God speaking. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I would I would take the same approach. I would, you know, I would say if I if I felt like I had a word of wisdom uh, or word of knowledge, sorry, I would say I feel like God is showing me this. Yeah. Um, if I'm if I'm doing that from the front on a Sunday or in a room where there's more than you know a handful of people, I would say I feel like God is saying about somebody here or or that there's somebody here who whatever. Um, I remember a, 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 one Sunday I had, I had a sense that God wanted to um, heal people who who had had a complication caused by surgery, um, yeah. and I remember saying. Uh, I feel like, you know, going up and explaining, I feel like God has, has highlighted this. Is there anybody here who, who has that? And uh, yeah. there was, um, although I don't think they actually came forward at the time. They came back the next couple of weeks and shared the fact that actually God then 
subsequently healed them during the week which was great yeah. um and I, I think that's really important that we give um that it's what paul it's what paul writes in romans 12 isn't it where he says prophesy according to the faith that you have or words to that effect isn't it in purport in, in accordance with the proportion of the faith that you have and i think when we're sharing these words i think we've got to be really careful about saying god is saying this god is saying that when we're not 100 percent sure yeah, that absolutely. god is saying that or saying this i think it's perfectly acceptable and preferable that when we have words of wisdom for people um words of knowledge uh, insight prophetic insight whatever it may be revelatory insight that we couch that in language that makes that gives people the power to make the decision about whether yes. they are um receiving that or not and it, it's perfectly okay for people to say in the context of a conversation in a church service in a small group that no that doesn't resonate or no i don't think that's right or i, I don't i don't recognize what you're saying there um, and that doesn't mean that somebody's a false prophet or they yeah this that or the other it just means that what we thought we'd heard maybe we didn't quite hear properly or maybe maybe we've not quite yet grown in our discernment to understand that or we've done that age-old thing of we've interpreted it ourselves yeah. which is so easy to do and shouldn't be done you know this is why prophets and teachers work together the prophets prophesy and the teachers do the teaching of it you know and yeah. it's yeah that's good but yeah. yeah but so tentative you know always it's like good theology essays any assertion is tentative <laughs> you know it would seem that so and so is saying rather than mm. that's a load of rubbish you know you, you don't you don't make dominant assertions yeah. in any in in any aspect of ministry yeah. i don't think certainly extremely rarely mm. I, I think maybe there are occasions where i've seen it happen and you think well that was the right call but very very rarely extremely rarely would you do that and i would always say in the context of you know wanting to operate these gifts from that place of love for you know thinking of others before of us before ourselves yeah. for the common good to see the church built up we want to operate in a way that um that that does that gives the power to the people who are receiving what we're giving absolutely so that that i think any time that the uh, the power dynamic shifts in that space where people are operating in you know yeah the, gift of the holy spirit if the power dynamics shifting towards the person who is operating in the gift absolutely i think it means we've come out of alignment with love yes and so we want to operate in our language in our approach in, in our humility yeah. um in service towards one another where we're putting the power in the hands of the people who are receiving what we're giving yeah yeah, there's a, there's a sense that, you know, that there has been in the past a little bit of an arrogance sometimes with people. Um, and God's exposed that, you know, where people have said, well, you, well you, you're like, oh, well, I'm not really sure that that's for me. Well, that's what the Lord said. You know, do with it what you like, but I know I've given you the word. You know, <laughs> it's just, well, actually, you know, and, and sometimes there is some of that. There is that, the, you know, but God knows what he is doing. And he also knows the right thing to say and so the likelihood is if the person is not receiving it and recognizing it as a good uh, as a word from god then it's probably you that's got it wrong it's much more likely to be you that's got it wrong than god who got it wrong yeah. you know and it might be that the person isn't recognizing it because they're not in a place or they don't want to admit mm. it or something like that but the biggest likelihood is that is that you've got it wrong and that's yeah. okay it's yeah. okay because yeah. if we were perfect and did it right all the time then there wouldn't be any need for us to come before god and ask him for gifts would there he would yeah. say that's it you're sorted oh, go off go off and heal people so yeah, humility is massive yeah and i think if we're if if we're sharing a word with somebody and we feel really strongly that this is a bang on word and it's yeah. for them and they're still and they're saying no i don't think that's right okay that's up that's up to them i've yeah, had that yeah i've had that so years and years ago 20 25 years ago william prentice gave me a um a a prophecy and it was just a very simple i was being prayed for by someone else and he came over and he put his hand on my head and he went god's gonna heal your family and i went away going there's nothing wrong with my family what on earth is he talking about 
And yet here we are 25 years down the line. And oh my goodness, you know what my family's been through. And we are healed. You know, we've come through it. We've worked out what 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 family looks like without a father in it. We how we how we come together, how we relate to each other, how we talk about our faith to each other, how we trust each other, and and you know, and he's done it. And and actually that piece of paper, because I wrote it down, because I said to William, there's nothing wrong with my family. He went, write it down, you'll need it. And I did. And I just wrote on a bit of paper, heal my family and put it in my in my Bible. And it was an old Bible that I then stopped using and had a new Bible. And it wasn't until many, many years later um, that I was really in trouble and I happened to come across it. And there it was, heal my family. And I was like, God, I need this now. This is now when I need it. Yeah. And uh, and 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 so he did. Um, so yeah, we don't always recognize it at the time. Yeah. Okay, just before we wrap up, just because I always want to honor when people put their questions into the chat. Abigail's oh, asked one. a question. The more does the more that one uses the spiritual gifts, do you get better at using them? So if we if we're Counting that in, perhaps those revelatory gifts, wisdom, knowledge. Yeah. I don't think it's us that gets better at using them. I think it's perhaps our character and our and our reverence for God gets better at hearing him. So I think as we mature, as we transform spiritually throughout our years, we get better at hearing God's voice. Yeah. And I think I'd add to that as well. I, you know, if we're talking about giving a, a word of knowledge, giving a word of wisdom, giving a prophecy, if we're talking about the utterance of those, the delivery of those. I think we get better at that as well. And that is more of the more out of the shaping of our character, yeah. more of our sort of us being conformed to the image of Christ, and maturing in our faith and learning to love better. The, the better we love, the more able we are to articulate all of those things in a way that honors and serves and loves another person yeah. in a way that reflects the heart of God. And so I guess if you're asking the question, does it become easier to discern when God is giving you like a word of knowledge? Um, I think, yeah, yeah, because as you were saying, you, you learn to hear his voice better. You yeah. learn the ways he speaks, not necessarily. Um, you don't necessarily learn a method like it's not necessarily oh I, i've had this before this is what god is this is how god always does it for yeah, no. so he always gives me a word of knowledge yeah. it's not about learning a method it's about it's about growing in relationship so the more we grow in relationship with god the closer we are to the holy spirit the more conformed to the image of christ we are and the deeper we're walking in love and i think the the stronger our relationships in in the church that we're part of yeah the the better if you like in inverted commas we will get uh, uh, operating in these gifts. Absolutely. And and sometimes, you know, the gift is there and it's not meant to be shared. God has often given me mm -hmm. words of knowledge about particular people that were for my benefit, not not there. So it's, it's yeah. almost like a warning, don't have anything to do with them. You know, and that discernment of understanding yeah. What's behind that? That's another gift, isn't it? Sending people in spirits, but it's it comes with listening to God's voice, with recognizing His voice, how He speaks to you, and it'll be a variety of ways. And um, and yeah, you get better at it. And do you realize that very cleverly you have brought us right back round to where we started with pursue love and desire spiritual gifts? Well, there we go. That works out well, doesn't it? <laughs> As we come to the end of our longest ever episode. <laughs> this is fun. I think this is a great topic and we're going to have some great conversations about this going forward. So on Sunday, we're continuing this series and we're looking at the gifts of faith. We're looking at healing and we're looking at miracles. So that's going to be exciting. We might even have a few healings and a few miracles in the service. Who knows? So certainly I think we're going to open the door and we're going to go for it. Uh, we're going to like we've been saying, you know, God's a good father who if we ask him for a, a, a bread is going to give us a stone uh, and we're going to ask God to move and, and do some wonderful things on Sunday. So big encouragement to be there on Sunday if you can be. And if you can't be, join us online. And if you can't make it live, 
pick up afterwards and watch back. Um, but we'll be back here next week, probably Wednesday, Thursday, uh, I'd imagine Thursday, for a further discussion as well. But thanks, Claire, for your time. Any well, last well, words from you as we finish? No, just that we need to get John on here next week. It's it's great when it's just me and you, but people want to hear more than just me and you. They do. You're right. Yeah, hopefully John will be back with us next week. He's off in Scotland, isn't he, this week? So uh, hope they're having a great time away. And um, yep, yeah, we'll see you all on Sunday, if not before. God bless. Thanks.